Well, hello. Happy Thursday. Happy Snyder Cut Justice League Day. I will be seeing that later. You're wondering, where is Andy's face? I like seeing him introduce things. What the heck is going on? Well, today we are just going to be talking about this comic that I found that I still had going through some long boxes, Death Dealer, based on Frank Frazetta's painting of the same name, so created by Frank Frazetta. This comic came out in 1996 through Verotic. Verotic was Glenn Danzig's comic book company. Glenn Danzig, as you know from The Misfits, uh, band he he uh, created, and then after that, Danzig, and uh, he is a Frazetta fan, so he got the rights to do a comic book based on Death Dealer, and he enlisted the artistic talents of Liam Sharp to do the artwork. The cover you're looking at is obviously a painting by Frank Frazetta, so let's, uh, I thought we would just go through it reminisce a little bit starting off oh and this is a square bound book as you can tell i think it's about 48 pages so starting off you have a beautiful front inside cover uh featuring a panel from inside the book by liam uh, liam is definitely channeling his inner frazetta here which you know i've always been a fan of liam's artwork because he draws these really big bold over the top uh, figures, which I, you know, I enjoy doing myself. But in this, I think he was really trying to uh, channel some Frazetta in the black and white line art that he was doing, looking at some of Frank's uh, black and white ink work. Uh, colors on this were by Byron Talman, letters Bill Oakley. The story thus far. And it gives us a little background of the story. I will say, um, I think the art on that page should have been pushed back a little bit more so the text could have been easier to read. Small nitpicky thing, but it's little things like that that, you know, make a difference. Um, I have not read this again since I pulled it out because I was looking for some reference earlier today in my uh, comic collection and basically came across this. So I just want to uh, reminisce live with you guys. So I have not read it since, uh, I don't know, probably in 20 years. So I won't really be talking about the story too much. I will say, uh, as I was going through it before doing this video, every page uh, Liam did really stands out as a piece of, uh, just a really nice piece of art in its own I love this shot of Death Dealer here on his horse. And this is just a manly horse. I mean, that horse, no pun intended, that horse has got some balls, if you know what I mean. That is just a beast of a horse, not um, definitely not a racehorse. You know, racehorses you think are more lean and, uh, and muscular for running around the track. This horse is just balls to the wall, beast. Death Dealer, you know, keeping with the face and shadow. You only see his glowing eyes. I love that. The detail that um, Liam puts into his panels and into his pages, I've always admired. He is He definitely does not shy away from the work. The lettering to me looks a little big. Um, I think it could be taken down just a little bit. But, you know, whatever. That's a that's a nitpicky thing. Once again, we've got a splash page here with another. This book has a lot of big images, which I think is cool. So we've got a splash here of uh, Death Dealer. That is the, actually the shot that we see here. So I think that's really cool. Um, I like the color in it. Some of the coloring gets a little dark and muddy. Uh, I don't know if that was due to printing back then. Once again, 25 years ago or what. But, you know, uh, it fits. 
creepy old hag here. Great shot, Death Dealer talking to her. He's like, tell me the future, old one. When I go get my tarot cards right, I say the same thing. Even if the person's younger than me, I'm like, tell me the future, old one. And then they just look at me. You know, another big shot. This this book is just really a lot of big images. Uh, it goes for, I think I was looking on eBay just for the hell of it. And I think it goes for like 10, 12 bucks on eBay. So I was, uh, I saw that and I'm like, maybe I should put this in a bag and board. Save it a little bit. Anyhow, back to the art. You know, Liam's doing lots of heavy, dark, black shadows on the work, which I think helps to uh, evoke a Frazetta feel to it as well. I mean, let's see. I love that. That's just so cool. If any of you guys have read this book before, please chime in and let me know. I'd be curious. See what you think. I might have to go back and reread it tonight. Just great shots, you know, nice large panels to show off the action on a page. Took that dude's head off. This book is definitely not for the faint of heart. Look at that. Dude gets back up with no head. There's some magic going on there. That's for sure. And you just love this. He just died. Headless body. I don't know how he sees where he's going, but he just dives on the death dealer. Once again, the horse is, I think, really beautifully drawn. Uh, nice twist in the body to the horse. I think things like that are very cool to help uh, show the motion and the action so it's not so static. So his shoulder girdle is going one way and his hips are twisting another way. Just helps really move the action. Oh, this dude's head is grown out of his tummy now. So does that mean when he eats, it just goes right into his stomach? I don't know. But I, you know, I like this. I like this composition on this page. It's, you know, you've got a lot of space up here, but it just has this nice arc to it. You know, Death Deer looking up to here, to the gory, uh, decapitated neck hole. And then it kind of leads us off the page, up to this page. You could call that a nice hero shot of Death Dealer right there. And he just slices it to the guy. And it's like every time he slices into this guy, more heads just pop out. It's like Hydra. You take off one head, another one grows back or two grow back, whatever. I'm getting the saying messed up, but you know what I mean if you've watched the Captain America movies. Hell, Hydra, cut one head off, two grow back in its place. It's like Hydra. Cut this dude, more heads just grow back, and they all talk. Just imagine that voice. Cannot die. Not die. We pop to a two-page spread, and Death dealer, Dealer's like, we shall see, demon. Kill me if you can. If you can. Very cool. Great shadow work here. Um, Liam is a contemporary of mine. I think we broke into the business around the same time. And, you know, I followed his work through the years from the stuff he did for Marvel UK on Death's Head to when he did the Incredible Hulk at Marvel, which I believe was after Gary Frank left the book. And uh, he did some X-Men stuff I thought was cool. Um, and he's just always really drawn this visceral artwork that really evokes just some great feelings. Cool shot here. And uh, it looks like he was able to actually finally kill the demon so you know it's death dealer you know it would here we go val s says cool stuff i'm new to comics so reviewing older stuff like this is great for me you know i'm going to try and review stuff like this more uh i do a podcast with my buddy dennis called the dennis and andy show we have our own youtube channel dennis and andy show we were talking about it we're going to do some retro reviews i believe is what we're going to call them 
just kind of going back through stuff that we enjoyed when we were teenagers back in the 80s and stuff and showing stuff that people might not have seen. Like I said, this book had a very low print run. Here's the cover if you haven't, uh, if you didn't see it in the beginning. Death Dealer, Verotic is the name of the company. It had a very low print run. So, you know, I'm sure copies are out there. So if you want to get it, if you're a fan of this type of work, uh, search it out. Uh, Liam Sharp is doing the art. Uh, Glenn Danzig wrote this. As I stated, this art is very uh, Simon Bisley-esque as well. And I know that Liam is a fan of Simon Bisley as well. Retro reviews sound awesome. Thank you. I believe that's what we're going to call it. The retro reviews with the Dennis and Andy show. And they'll, they'll be pre-recorded. They won't be live. We usually do the Dennis and Andy show live. Those will be pre-recorded, though. Um, back to the artwork. I really like this splash page. Uh, it just evokes Frazetta. Um, I like the coloring on it as well. Val says, this is a really great channel. You should mention it more when you're streaming with EVS. I should, but, you know, when I'm on somebody else's channel, uh, I, I just look at it like I'm a guest in their house. And I don't know if it's cool promoting something like that. I don't know. I could ask Ethan before if it's cool if I promote my channel before I go on. But, you know, don't want to overstep when you're a guest in somebody else's house. But I definitely see what you're saying. Back to the art. Love this shot. This shot is just so cool. You know, this whole book is just violent with him just fighting demons and warriors. This is a great heroic type shot. He is but one. Kill him. Yeah, but he's one. He's the freaking death dealer. This artwork is just insane. I, I envy this because I don't do... Um, oh, hey, Ted. Good to see you. Very cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, the, I don't I don't tend to chunk up my art with lots of black shadows and stuff. And it's not that I can't. I've done it before. I just I don't know. I, I I'll do a drawing and I'll do it in my normal type style. And then I'll take a photocopy of it and really chunk it up with uh, with more blacks and shadows and stuff. And, you know, I just don't like the way it looks. I, I like the stuff more open when I do it, but I look at this stuff and I just love it. Uh, great comment here from John. John says, not a Frazetta book till we get to the women. Well, John, if you've never seen this book, I hate to disappoint. Not many women in this book. Head on a pike, though. Great battle scenes that Frazetta was known for. Liam trying to channel it. Love this here. Uh, it might be hard to see, but Death Dealer here is just splattered in blood as he cuts across this guy. And that guy's just getting to take it to him. Oh, not a big fan of having to flip a book. I think it takes you out of the storytelling. But you got to admit, that's pretty cool. All the dead bodies, uh, Frazetta-esque composition. Love the caption. Finally, it stopped. There he stood atop a mountain of bloody, fleshy debris that was once human life. He's the death dealer, damn it. Taking in his destruction, looking at his trusty steed, the horse that looks like the horse of an Incredible Hulk. This is really dark. Trust me, it doesn't get much better in the book. It really is almost a silhouette. That's why I wish uh, some of the coloring wasn't as dark so you can make out more of this silhouetted shape. Uh, we get the death dealer here hung upside down. And it doesn't matter the lighting. His face is always in shadow, just the way it should be. Another splash. This book has a lot of splash pages and big pages with maybe one inset panel on it. He's going against this Conan type character here. 
two horses crossing in battle, swords flying. I will say this is another nitpicky thing where, you, you know, when you do a two-page spread and you do it in a comic book that is going to be stapled shut, um, that's fine if you put stuff across the center of the spread because stapled books can lie flat. When you have a book that has a spine, it's impossible to lie flat and you lose stuff in the middle. I can see as a picture whole compositionally why he did it this way. The horse balancing out each side, the center of the action going in the middle without it being offset. But if you know the book can't lay flat, I would have tried to arrange this a little off center so you could actually see what's going on on in the middle so it doesn't get lost like this. Uh, let's see. John says, what specifically did Liam do on this? What specifically did Frank do himself? Frank didn't do anything. Frank, uh, I mean, Frank was alive at the time, but they basically, as far as I know, Glenn Danzig got the license from Frank to do a Death Dealer comic. Liam did everything. He penciled and inked it. And then another guy named Byron Talman did the coloring. And then back then, somebody else did this color separations in Photoshop, Elizabeth Lewis. So I'm assuming Brian, not Brian, Byron, sorry. I'm assuming Byron did the coloring with watercolors or markers or something and then gave those guides to Elizabeth to do the separations in Photoshop. But Liam did all the art. For Zeta, they just pulled one of his Death Dealer paintings for the cover. So it's a Frazetta property that was licensed. This is the Conan-esque warrior that uh, Death Dealer's fighting. Another nice splash page where they're about to go at it again. You know Death Dealer is going to take it, knocks him off his horse. Of course, the dude gets up. Now he does he knock him off his horse. He cuts his arm off. And this is one bad mofo. He gets his arm cut off, and he just stands up like, yo, you cut my arm off ain't no big deal. So get over it. Well, on the next page, takes the dude's head off. That's how you end a fight. And it ends with a somber Death Dealer on his knees holding the head of his long-awaited prize. And then here's a self-portrait by Mr. Frank Fazetta, showing Frank Fazetta. I love Fazetta's paintings. I love, it's hard to see on the camera, but all the color that Frank puts into uh, the flesh tones, and he says, if it's hard, it's hard to read, I'll read it. 20 years ago, my character Death Dealer appeared on the cover of American Artist Magazine. On this 20th anniversary of Death Dealer, it is with great pride I can finally announce that Death Dealer is in script development at Dimension Miramax for release as a motion picture. I don't think that ever happened, but um, 20 years after Death Dealer was created in 1976, at least he got a comic out of it. Hey, you're welcome. I will try to answer all the questions I can. And then there's a little bio on Danzig. Fun fact, I learned about Danzig. He's a short little dude. Glenn Danzig is only 5'3". But he doesn't look it because the dude is, well, back when this picture was taken, dude is buff. Um, he's 65 now. Here's a nice picture of Liam Sharp. Liam Sharp today is rocking my look. And you go, what's that mean? That means we both have shaved heads. Once again, you can barely, I can barely read this stuff with a light on. You know, this is just really bad graphic design because you just can barely read that text. Uh, Verotic has done other comics back then as well. Uh, they did a Jaguar God, which is another Frazetta character. Looks like they did a few of those. Oh, this is Death Dealer number two. So I actually don't know if I have Death Dealer number one. So I'm going to have to look. Uh, and if I don't have it, I'm going to have to search it out. I don't know if Liam did the art in Death Dealer number one, because as you can tell, that title is very blacked out and hard to see. But uh, yeah, so it looks like Roddick did other books. 
And then here we go, that frontispiece flipped. I just love this piece. I'm going to show it this way. I love that. That piece, just the way that uh, Liam did the, did the lighting on it and the inking on it really evokes to me a Frank Fazetta feel. And I, I think it's awesome. So he was really channeling Frazetta when he did this. Which, you know, if you're going to do, if, if I was ever tasked to do a Frank Fazetta esque book, trust me, I would try and channel some Frazetta as well. So that's it. That is my uh, quick review flip through on uh, Death Dealer, Frank Vazetta's Death Dealer, written by Glenn Danzig and drawn by Liam Sharp. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. Um, like I said, on the Dennis and Andy show, we're going to try and do some retro reviews as well and uh, show more stuff. Oh, John says, oh, shit, didn't know it was that Danzig. Haven't heard his music in a while. Yeah, man, it's that Danzig. And uh, yeah, I mean, Danzig, when I was looking up uh, some stuff about him before I did this, he's 60. He's going to be 66 years old this year. That's really hard for me to get my mind around that. Danzig falls into the category of a senior citizen. That's crazy. Val says, thanks for the stream. Ask EVS if you or he can mention your channel. There are lots of people on his super chats advertising terribly drawn comics. I think that uh, he would be for you mentioning your channel. I appreciate it, Val. I will do that. Before I leave, I will play one thing. I do have my first man campaign on Indiegogo. You're like, what's first man? And I go, what's first man? This is first man. First man, you know the drill. A college kid is imbued with great power and likes it. Penumbra has other plans and hand delivers him to Monarch. A fun 64 page action pet comic book hearkening back to the glory days of Marvel Comics only on Indiegogo. That is First Man, and to give you guys a little extra treat here, I am going to show you some of the interior art to First Man, which is on Indiegogo right now, in demand. I will be getting the printed copies hopefully tomorrow or Saturday. Um... And then I can start doing fulfillment. If you haven't got in on the book yet, let's just go through a little bit of uh, First Man, shall we? Let's see. I'm going to open up a PDF. Here's a PDF. I don't want to give all the good stuff away, so I'm going to keep it like this instead of sharing my screen so you can't really read much. I don't want spoilers or anything. But I'm just going to click through. This is a print PDF. Uh, if you're asking what a print PDF is, this is literally the file I sent to the printer. So for these two page spreads, you're not seeing them next to each other because on a PDF, you wouldn't for the printer. So I'm just clicking through so you can see it. I want to literally go through all 64 pages of the book. And you're going, wait a second, slow down. Now, this is what I'm calling a tease. I'm just teasing you guys. I don't want to give away the milk. You need to get the cow or whatever that saying. I am so bad with sayings. It's not even funny. So look at this. Oh, man. Now, let's go back to that page. Oh, oh, dude, he is he is taking it. That was cool. Can't wait for the next professionals. The next professionals is tomorrow at 2 o'clock. As we're drinking, I guess. So day drinking on the professionals. Anyhow, let's get back to it. Look at him. Oh, yeah. This is good stuff here. Boom. Bio pages. I had to skip through the last couple pages because they're really spoilerific. And I don't I don't want to give that stuff away. But, oh, the bio pages, the origin page, the ad. That's it. That is First Man from my Astonishing Comics. So, please you haven't yet get yourself a copy now on indiegogo the link is in the description like and subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell for the next time i go live and until next time